So in this video I'm going to show you how to customize a project browser um, and then what we're going to do is uh, we'll create a, a view list and then utilize the customize project browser in combination with the view list to apply things like view templates and, and organize the, uh, the views in a far more structured manner. So to start off with we need to create a couple of um, project parameters and that's easily done by going to the manage tab uh, we'll go to project parameters and we're going to add and we're going to just create two I'm going to call one called view cat um, and we'll group that by uh, text and or project parameters rather be text and we'll group it by identity data uh, the key here is that we need to filter the category so we only in this case need to be selecting views because that's all we're dealing with we'll ok that and then we'll add another one called view sub cat. Now you may um, go through the process of naming them slightly better than this but this will give you some idea of what we're doing and again we'll sign the view sub cat uh, just to the category of views. So those two are set and ready to go. Next stage now is to start to look at um, duplicating the views and setting up the project browser. So what I'm going to do is start off by duplicating the views, so duplicate with detailing um, and this is probably if you don't have anything like a, uh, the case tools that allow you to duplicate views this is uh, the way you're going to have to do it and we'll just pick up these and see how I'm just kind of duplicating with detailing for each one so just spin through these guys okay that's good. So we've, we've duplicated the views and typically you do this on, on your template um, to start off with. Uh, let's just go back to this guy here. Um, what we'll do now is we're going to go to this up here. You can notice in the project browser you've got views and brackets all. If you select that label there or highlight the text that says views and right mouse click you can choose browser organization and you can see the preset ones that come with the out of the box um, Revit template which is what we're working on here and we can organize the browser we can actually um, structure it either by views or by sheets so you could also do your sheets at the base here but what we're going to do is focus around the views um, you'll notice all these ones are already as I said already set but we're going to do a new one uh, and we're just going to call it custom browser I'm sure you come up with a better name than myself and we'll OK that we don't want to filter anything but we do want to group um, uh, some of these parameters that we've controlled um, already rather really set um, um, in this dialog box so let's just step through this we need to group um, by view category and then by view subcategory and these are the ones we're going to we've named and you'll see in a minute we're going to actually label um, and start to add names to these these views uh, and they will stack in the browser uh, and then finally we're going to view uh, pick it up by family name uh, sort by family name so as long as you've got by view cat view subcategory and sort by family um, in this case we want them ascending and that will be fine if we OK that we're going to actually use that browser configuration and apply it and what's going to happen is absolutely everything is going to sit under the question mark okay uh, and this is where we can start to get smart so what we're going to do is these ones called copy these are going to be our work in progress views so let's just select this now and we scroll down and under um, identity data you should now see these two um, subcategories uh, that we've added the view subcat sorry Sorry, let's start again. The two parameters that we've added. So we've got view cat and view subcat. What we're going to do is the main um, subcat or category rather for this is going to be zero underscore whip. Okay, let's just get in that all in uppercase. And then because this is a floor plan, we're going to make it, uh, let's see how we're going to group this zero one plans. Okay, and if we apply that, you'll see that it now starts to um, cascade and structure how we want it to. And we're going to pick this guy here, we'll make him work in progress, and we'll make him floor plans, and likewise with this as well. 
Now we could go through and structure the plan um, in the way that we would want. Um, so getting the browser nice and neat. Uh, but let's look at another way how we could use the um, view list to start to control this in a far more structured manner. So we're going to go to view and you're going to go to the schedules and quantities and you're going to choose view list. Now we need to pick up a few of these fields and move them across. So I'm going to pick up here, we're going to pick up type uh, and I'm going to pick up family. Then I'm going to choose view cat um, then probably view template. We can show you how to apply view templates in a minute. Then we'll pick the view subcat and then finally we'll pick scale. Now we could go through and add a lot more. Uh, we don't want to filter anything but we do want to group things together. So um, under the sorting and grouping tab we're going to pick uh, view category. We'll make that a blank line uh, and then click that view subcat and make that a blank line as well. If we OK that, that should start to structure the browser slightly better and you can see the work in progress views have come down here now. Now let's think about what we need to do now. Well it's pretty easy. What we would do is start to look at the views here and then make sure that they are um, assigned to the correct view uh, category and then obviously subcategory probably what we need here is we're kind of missing some here we could actually do with the view name so let's go back to sorting and grouping uh, sorry fields and we'll pick up if we pick up the view name here and we'll move that right to the very top that will kind of start to help us okay and you can see here these are the work in progress views so what we would do in here we can make this work in progress and see how they jump down um, and then we've got anything with a copy we'll make this a work in progress as well so quickly and you'll notice hopefully um, on the left hand side how the the project browser is being restructured now these guys here we're going to make this one one published oops not like that we won't Okay, and we can make these published and these will group differently as well. Okay, almost there with these guys. And then what we're going to do is we're going to then start to group um, these published plan views. So what we're going to do here is we're going to make this floor plans. Uh, this one is a floor plan here. Um, and I think we're good actually because we haven't got a copy of the oh, site plan yeah we need the site plan in as well um, and then what we're going to do is make O2 and we make these reflected if we keep it case sensitive as well and they'll group as well and then finally let's pick up these guys as well so they group and then finally here we'll make these guys elevations and we can apply um, elevations as the subcategory here and then we just need to pick up this as well we're almost there and we'll make grouping for 3D Okay, so this is good. Um, our project browser is structured. Now I would come along and rename these views. Okay, and if you have a look at the project browser now, it's neatly structured. Um, and just by using the uh, view template and restructuring it here, we're automatically pushing it back to the to the browser. I think that's a far slicker way and structured way of doing it. The only thing I'd probably want to do then is come in here and start to apply. Uh, view templates to the published views so we start to lock them down so if you can see here level 0 floor plan we would come in here we would assign um, our uh, architectural plan as a view template and maybe we'll do the same here and we'll do the same for the site as well and the nice thing is if we go back to these views you'll find that the view template is locking um, items down so again we get a visibility graphics 
let's move this over you can see everything's greyed out because um, everything's assigned to a view template so the view templates ultimately controlling that view so hopefully that's been useful um, I think using this view list to control the browser and structure it early on will make an awful lot of sense if you obviously add additional views they're going to get picked up in the view list and you can start to apply these subcategories and view categories to those views again structuring the browser as I said we've only grouped it here by two main groups work in progress and publish but you might have export you might have coordination um, hopefully that's useful um, I see a lot of value in structuring the browser don't just use the out of box version because um, you know one of the nice things about Revit is we can duplicate views for lots of different purposes so it makes an awful lot of sense to customize the browser to follow your workflow